when you think of Hot Wheels racing, normally speed and agility and even close head-to-head -head battles are the first things that come to mind. And not so much endurance. But in this tournament, endurance will be the key word. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan. And even at that, I am excited to welcome back the Street Beasts to this tournament. As you can see, they're going to show up here as the first team to be competing. And yes, I am not mistaken in saying this. I see a duck and roll in that group of Street Beasts. NASCAR being the other side of the coin in today's matchup. Impala and the Praying Menace, I will say a fun name there, Praying Menace, will kick us off. And endurance is the word of the day. How will that manifest in today's track, in today's racing, in today's matchups, and in the coming videos that we'll see unfold as we roll out today? As you can see, we got a bunch of long straights here, followed by very tight hairpins. I am definitely worried about the duck and roll in those tight hairpins because they are just narrow and sharp. And we'll get NASCAR, the Impala, out there for the first win. You'll see times as benchmark there, 22.38. Look at that, coming down here, Impala. And keep an eye on that number because that will give you an idea of how fast cars are moving compared to each other over the course of these videos. NASCAR in a turtle shell. And, uh... On the race to here. And now we can get a sense of some of the speeds. 22.38. Keep that number in mind, like I said. Benchmark time first race out there. Seemed pretty good, but how can we know pretty good until we see more races unfold? NASCAR looking good there down the 43. Bright blue and orange car taking those hairpins nice and tight. And honestly, well, it's not really like you can do it any other way. Anyway, those are really, really rough hairpins. Surprised to see them so tight on a course that has so much emphasis on speed and endurance. But uh, that's the way it goes. 21.15, and our benchmark has been lowered. Now, I want to point out something here. It is clear that the straights are long. It is clear that the uh, turns are tight. Charger and duck and roll will... Uh, get going here excited to see how this quacker does but what not um what may not be so clear but is very present in this particular race is the lateral motion that these cars go through over the course of this race you see that first straight goes outside now the second straight a little bit further out now the third straight even further out and then they start to come back in now a lot of that lateral motion is to, no, the fourth straight even goes out more and it's this fifth straight where things start to close back in street beast might get their first win here duck and roll rolling up and good and fast narrowing inside down the straight and there's no contest um definitely slower than the previous nascar but still 22 point i believe one or two seven there let's see two seven that's not a terrible time but all that lateral motion kind of um charger and steer clear we'll get going well uh kind of um comes back inside in that fifth straight we go out 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 on those hairpins and then there's a lot of shift back in now that does have an effect if you didn't have the lateral motion and it was just straight down in that fifth straight you'd be talking about a different set of skills so agility is a part of this course today the steer clear is uh coming out fast and the street beasts are trying to look to Maybe put a second win up there on the board. And look at the speed down the straight four. Just got faster as it went on. And closes inside here. And we'll get another win. Street Beast 22.09. At 21.15. There's a number to look out for. That's fast. Endurance is key. Steer clear does it very well. Just pacing himself and getting faster and faster over the course of this track and uh, can't do much better than that impala and the tex rex royer what uh, i don't know how to tongue twist through that one tex rex royer tex no what am i talking t-rex t-rex royer someone in the comments i, I don't know I, 
Someone in the comments give me like a like a official English pronunciation guide on that one. No matter, uh, NASCAR coming out a lot faster. Number four, bright white car with some nice shiny decals down the side, wiggling a little bit into that fourth straight as he comes fast down towards the final hairpin. Cuts back inside here as the hairpin goes. Oh, slow into the lateral motion, but still has a lot of room to work with, and he's going to cross with a 21.55, very fast time. Um, and the text to the Tex-Mex Rex Rex Royer. Um, yeah, that's that's my final answer on that. Not going to advance anyway. Let's keep it rolling. Monte Carlo in the perfect speed. I'm going to assume that's the way um, fans of the perfect speed would want that pronounced um, in regards to the feline theme. Anyway, the perfect speed might be in my mouth more than you think. Starting off good and staying fast, looking for a win. Here comes NASCAR, though. That turn was tough on the perfect speed. And it's only by a few lengths. This one's going to be a close one here. Down the hill into the fourth straight, looking fast for the perfect speed. And, oh man, I can't, man, I can't keep saying that. But I'm trying. Perfect speed. <laughs> Slow into the... I can't. I'm going nuts. All right, 21-6-1. That's not bad. The perfect speed is moving on. Oh, God. That's going to drive me nuts um, in later races. Circle Tracker and the Arachnorod. Whew, looks like Lightning McQueen out there, number 75. Arachnorod, NASCAR 75. At least in the colors. Yeah, a little bit on the top there, maybe too dark. But either way, Arachnorod coming out fast. Up by a few lengths. Endurance is hard. Endurance is one of the most difficult things in racing. Because endurance, basically, if you want to throw a definition at the, uh, at the wall here to cover endurance in the context of Hot Wheels racing, it's, it's speed with consistency over a long period of time. That's 21.8. That's not bad. A lot of times in the 21s. Nothing below 21 yet. But, and, and we see speed a lot with racers. Uh, NASCAR and the Velocity. We see consistency a lot with races. But adding that over time, that, that, that large amount of time where that speed and consistency is maintained, now that's where it's difficult. Because even on short courses, Cars can manage to be consistent. Cars can manage fast speeds and just put it all out there in a sprint and do it over and over again in a consistent manner. But it's those long races where you really have to pace yourself and know when to speed up, know when to slow down, know when to conserve energy, know when to move inside, know when to be agile, know when to just slow down and give some time to build back up energy. There's a 22.49, Velociraptor, and know all those things and execute while the pressure of another racer right behind you, or beside you in this case, is still there. Five Street Beasts to three NASCARs. And let me go to the second round. The last racer in the Impala. It's just a matter of time before that perfect vehicle comes back. Here we go, Velociraptor, Impala, Impala out of the gate, nice and fast, up by a length, here we go, blue, darker blue on the vehicle body, stands out against that red of the Velociraptor, who again, I don't know how aerodynamic that giant tail is in the sense, but it's just the hairpins that are tough on the Velociraptor, he's down a bunch of lengths now, and you saw how slow he was through that hairpin right there, how does it look for this hairpin, ooh, slow again, and it's still the Impala coming out fast, here we go to that final hairpin, and the Impala just goes right through, Swing right through like it's nothing, like it's butter, and he comes down and crosses the line. 21.97. Not the best time we've seen today, but good enough to advance. And honestly, anything under 22 as of this point, steer clear in the 43 Richard Petty, um, anything under 22 is, is, is admirable. We haven't seen any other teams yet, so we don't know what kind of times they're going to put up, but at least based on the information we have, we're looking for that under 22. Now, the Richard Petty coming out really fast. And we saw this car in the 
first. I believe this car picked up a, a, a 2115 in his first race, if I remember correctly. And he's coming out fast this time. You can just see the speed. It becomes a blur on the screen. Here we go to the final hairpin that leaves outside. The next one comes back inside here. And then the track starts to laterally move again. Wiggles back inside. Still out by a lot. Slows down for a second. Can he beat his time? He can. 20.92. Wonderful. 20.92. Under 21 time. And the Richard Petty's going to be a uh, <laughs> car to look out for. The perfect speed and the Impala. Let's see if the perfect speed is going to race another day here. Right now behind by a length. Here comes the Impala out by a length. Beautiful white vehicle and the decal choice was excellent on this car and definitely would like to see either of these cars in the next round but the perfect speed, uh, speed down by a few lengths here we go for that final outward hairpin and the perfect speeds continues to lose ground how will the inside wiggles look here as we round that final hairpin here comes the impala Ooh, inside he goes perfect speed has a lot of ground to catch up and he will not purr another day 20.97 what a good finish Enough purring, duck and roll in the Ragnarod, because I am tired of purring. But, uh, well, enjoy it while it lasts, Jim, because there is uh, one more time for you. There will be no purr fixed speed in the finals today. Duck and roll in the Ragnarod. Duck and roll coming out on the near side, down by a length. Beautiful vehicle, Arachnorod, lesser known on the Street Beast Gang. Everyone rooting for that duck and roll, and he starts to build a comeback here down the hill. Now within a few lengths, now within one, and it's close. Coming down to the final straight. Here we go, they both wiggle inside. Duck and roll takes the lead in the fifth straight and has it to the finish. 21-25. And that's a good time. Believe it or not, the duck and roll putting up quite a good time here. Street Beast 1, NASCAR 3 as we head to the semifinal. And he's going to be a car to really watch. Duck and roll the Impala. Impala last time put up a sub-21 time. Against the... One more time. Perfect speed. But I don't know how many times more that would be said, but... Uh Probably more than you're expecting, and more than I'm really expecting, to be honest. But the duck and roll coming out a little bit faster. Impala, maybe a little slow out of the gate. It was such a good time in the previous race. Last race, I'm not sure how he's struggling so much, even against the duck and roll. So we come around that final hairpin, and we have one more to the inside. They're about even. Here comes the duck and roll. Really burning rubber up here. He might have a new best time personally, and maybe a new best time overall. Coming to the gate, and he crosses with a 20.98. And that's the third best time of the day. 20.98 and the duck and roll could even beat the Richard Petty here in the finals which uh, again I am making an assumption here by far but uh, based on the speed we saw today from the Richard Petty it's hard to imagine this car not being in the finals you're going up against the Impala dark blue good racer but the Richard Petty has just been dominant today by not just even a little bit a long shot so keep an eye out here you go Richard Petty again coming out really fast against his own teammate you might even say his uh, speed is uh, perfect. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, here comes the Richard Petty. Slow down. He comes to the inside. He might not have a new best time here. Oh, my God. 20.73. Oh. <sighs> Duck and Roll is going to struggle. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to just say it. I love the Duck and Roll. I do. 43 Richard Petty in the Duck and Roll. But the Duck and Roll will struggle. By the way, shout out to uh, the Races and Fun new graphics uh, theme that we have here for this race. It continues to get better and better every week. Please drop a sub on the channel if you have not already and you're enjoying the content. We love the support. Leave a comment. We love to hear what you think about the races. And this is going to be one for the ages. We have a duck and roll out there. And we have, well, one of the fastest cars that I've seen in a long time here in an endurance-based race. Here comes the duck and roll around that far hairpin. Oh, he's behind by a lot. The Richard Petty. He continues to top his time. Race after race after race. And he might do so again. Oh, my God. Do I dare I even say what I'm seeing right now? What is that number? 20.2. Unbelievable.
unbelievable. If you're not sitting at home broiling with excitement, I don't even know that's the right word, then I don't even know... How could you not be, is what I'm trying to say. That... I, what? 20.2? He might go sub-20! Duck and roll. Trying to stay fast in this one. He's still in it. He's only a few lengths behind. Here around the hairpins. Needs to look faster on the hairpins. That's where the struggle's been for the duck and roll. The hairpins. And the Richard Petty just has no issue. It's butter. It's butter for him. He comes to the final hairpin. Out by a long shot. Duck and roll gave it his best effort. But there's only one vehicle who's fast enough to put this away. 20.38. No cars could do even close to better. And that's going to put away this one. Valiant effort from the duck and roll. I think a second place is going to be a proud finish for this particular street beast. And advancing to the finals finals, which will be, well, later on, is the 43 Richard Petty. What? So for today's video, we will be having the team pickups versus the fantasy cars. Uh, which one of these groups has more endurance? We'll have to find out as we take a look at the first group. The Nash versus the Chevy pickup. This is the longest track to date here on Races and Fun. It is the Nash off to the early lead through the first corners. And these corners are very tight compared to some of our previous videos. We go down the next corner and it is the Chevy pickup who has taken the lead. The Nash did not have the proper endurance that he needed for the uh, second half of this race. Will he be able to come up right at the last second? It's not looking like it. The Chevy pickup is still able to hold the lead, but the Nash comes up right there. They're neck and neck, and the Nash is able to take over the lead. Wow. The Chevy pickup loses it out within the last corner. That is a show that that pickup did not have the endurance he needed. For this tournament. Next up, Ford F-150 and the Lethal Diesel. And it's Ford F-150, who has the slight lead in the first half of the race. Is he wasting all his energy yeah, for the uh, finish of the second half? He is losing a little bit of ground to the Lethal Diesel there. Down to the second to last corner. And it's Lethal Diesel, who is now in lead. They are neck and neck to the final corner. This will make or break your race right here. And it's the Ford F-150. Who comes out to the lead, he'll take this heat. With, uh, let's see what the time was on that race. It was 21, faster than the last race. Now for the Fusion Busta versus the GMC Cyclone. And they are off neck and neck. Neither car really wanting to push ahead right at the beginning of the race, but it is the Cyclone who does push out right at that first corner. And he is taking this heat by storm way far ahead of the uh, Fusion Busta. It's not looking like he's going to even be challenged for the lead. He just sprinted the entire way. Didn't even treat it like an endurance race. But he slowed down there. Fusion Busta's coming up right behind him. But he isn't able to do it. And the uh, Cyclone is able to take this heat. Very risky move by the Cyclone using up all his energy. And barely made it out at the last corner. Now the Lulux versus Magic Go. Or is it Mocket Go? Well, right now it is the Lulux who is in the lead. There are really two types of cars in this tournament. The car that will go in the early lead and then lose out in the second half. And there's the car who waits until the uh, other car gets farther ahead and then comes out in the front right in the second half. Right now they're neck and neck. Who will come out uh, out of this final corner? And it is the Lulux with a slight lead. He will take this heat. And now for Count Muscula versus the Studebaker. And they're off. Studebaker off to the slight lead through the first corner. Let's see if he falls out through the second and third corner. And he's still in the lead. Muscula showing that he just doesn't have enough endurance even just to keep up. He uh, definitely chose the wrong strategy for this race. Unless somehow the 
pickup is able to slow down. And he does a little bit there, but he will be able to take this heat. Team pickup is doing a good job at advancing their cars so far in this tournament. Now for Draftinator versus the Roadster Bite. And they're off neck and neck at this point. Let's see who comes out first. And it is the Roadster taking the lead strategy in the beginning of the race. If you are able to keep the lead right from the start and gain enough of a lead, even if you lose your stamina and endurance in the second half of the race, hopefully the lead you had already gained will give you kind of a safety cushion and let you uh, make it to the end before the other car is able to catch up to you. We saw that with one of the pickups earlier in the video. And it's looking like that's what the Roadster is doing in this race. Roadster will be winning this heat by far. Draftinator not even close. You can show some of these cars just have enough power to just push through and stay in lead for the entire race. And now for the Divincinator versus the Volkswagen. And Divincinator all the way up immediately in the lead right out of the starting gate. But then it is the uh, Volkswagen coming up right after the first corner. You can see what a mistake the Divincinator did there. Using up all his energy to try to take the lead right out of the gate. And he is lagging behind in the second half of the race. More than the second half, uh, the second two thirds of this race. And it is the uh, Volkswagen who will take this heat. Unless somehow the Divincinator will be able to catch up. But it's not looking like it's going to happen. No, it won't. Hopefully the rest of the cars in this video can take note of what not to do from that heat. Ford F-150 and the Bully Goat. And we're off with the uh, Ford F-150 taking the lead right at, out of the starting great gate just like the Defensinator did in last heat. Will he lose out to the Goat? We'll have to see. A little slow through that corner, but so is the Goat. The F-150. Trying to make that safety cushion I was mentioning earlier. It's looking like it's paying off. They go through the final corner. The GOAT very much behind. F-150 will definitely take this heat. GOAT coming in pretty far behind. Let's see what the time was for the uh, F-150 here. 22. Decent time, but I've seen a 20. So... Not the best, but not the worst. So two fantasy cars will be advancing and six pickups to the second round. The fantasy cars are having a very hard time in this tournament. So now for the Roadster Bite versus the GMC Cyclone. And neck and neck coming out of the gate. Kind of seems like the best thing to do in this endurance tournament. No one really wants to go out to the extended lead at the beginning of this tournament unless you just are sure that you'll be able to keep the lead for the remainder of the race. And it is the Roadster who is taking the lead in the second half of this race. The uh, Cyclone is trying to make it up in the last corner. Will he be able to? He's coming there and he's taking the lead. And it will be the Cyclone who will take the lead and win this, this heat. The Roadster losing out in the last corner. Now for the Volkswagen Caddy and the Nash, that last corner is very crucial in this race. Seems like if you are in the lead, you will slow down through that corner. So you really need to be pretty far ahead if uh, the other car is even within the vicinity of your area. And who's coming out first in this heat? It is the Nash from the uh, Fantasy Cars team. Be able to pick up, be able to come up here. They're neck and neck to the final corner. Who will come out first? It's the pickup. The Nash won't be able to hold the lead. He lost the lead in that uh, last corner. He didn't have enough endurance. This track over 100 feet long. The Lulux and the Studebaker up next. And uh, these cards are really being put to their limits in this tournament. They have never seen a track this long before. They come up first. The Studebaker is in the lead. Lulux 
taking the slower route in the first section of the course. But now he's trying to catch up here. Let's see if he passes through the next corner. And it will still be the Studebaker who is in the lead now for the final corner. There's still a possibility that Lulux could come up and take the win, but he's really slow through that corner. And it will be the Studebaker who will take this heat. At this point, though, it's uh, two pickups racing against each other. So even though they want, both wanted to make it to the finals, only one can do so. So they're under less pressure to advance. Two F-150s, here we go. The red one and the blue one. And they're neck and neck. These two cars should be similar in terms of strategy and of handling because they are similar vehicles. But it is the red F-150 who comes out to the lead in the second half of the course. The Goodyear blue F-150 lagging behind a little bit. And uh, he still could pass if the red F-150 has trouble through this corner. And he does there. Blue F-150 coming up from behind. They're neck and neck, but not quite. And the red F-150 will be advancing. Now for the semi-final round. And all of the fantasy cars have been eliminated. This will guarantee a pickup advancement. Studebaker versus Cyclone. And we are off. Fantasy cars have had a failure in this tournament, not even getting one car to the semi-final. They will definitely not be advancing to the final video in this tournament. And it is the uh, Cyclone who has the commanding lead at this point. Will he be able to keep the lead in this final corner? It's looking like it. He does have a little bit of a slow there. He will be taking this heat. The Studebaker will be eliminated. Let's see what the time was for the uh, Cyclone. 20.77, a pretty good time. Now for the Volkswagen versus the Ford F-150. The better of the two F-150s in this tournament, the red one, coming out very quickly into the lead through the first straight. Will he be able to endure the rest of the race? We'll have to see. We've entered the second half of the race, and the F-150 is still in the lead. Doing a good job at endurance at this point. And through the final corner. He's uh, definitely going to take this heat. F-150 will be advancing to the final round of this video. Now for the finals. Which cards will it be? The car with the best time will advance to the final video of this tournament. For F-150 versus the Cyclone. Really, it is about time, not necessarily about beating your competitors. So, these cars can focus more on the speed and just lasting out, not necessarily having to play catch up with each other. And it is the Cyclone who is in the lead in this uh, heat. We'll have to see how the Ford F 150 will be able to do in terms of time as well. And he's coming up there and he will pass the Cyclone. And he'll get a better time. Looks like a 20.96 from that side angle. Yes, it is. Now let's see what the Cyclone can do. Will the Cyclone be able to have a better time in this next heat? The Cyclone trying to get out in the lead at the beginning of the race strategy. F-150 is lagging behind just waiting for the Cyclone to slow down in the second half of the race. The Cyclone does not want that to happen though, as he is gaining a lot of speed. Looks like he'll be having the better time. What will the time be? Will he be able to advance? 20.47. He gets the better time. The F-150 only has one more chance to beat this time. If he doesn't, the Cyclone will be advancing to the final video of this tournament. The F-150 in the slight lead, but the slight clone also coming out as well. Endurance has been thrown out the window at this point. They're just sprinting to the line. And it is the Cyclone who 
gains lead in the second half of the race. F-150 is having trouble with some endurance. The, the Cyclone will, if he wins this tournament, and he will be advancing to the final round. F-150 coming up here. But the Cyclone will be winning this heat, and he gets a 20.78. And he'll be advancing to the final round of this tournament. I have wondered why the choice for such small hairpins in this endurance based tournament. Here we go with a third group, by the way. Exotics will be going up against the fast foodies. And I've only come to the opinion that the uh, small hairpins increase the amount of demand for endurance on those long straights and for speed on those long straights and if a larger hairpin was used. Why necessarily? Uh, I think just because they're so tiny and they take away so much speed on the turn it really forces a car to build up speed and maintain it on each and every long straight. You can see that happening here. Uh, food truck here on the near side looks like he has quite the lead but that's the only theory I got oh my god they almost stalled there for a second but he's still barely ahead and they're both slow to the finish line and that will set a benchmark 2364 for these couple of groups couple of teams hey everybody by the way I'm Brendan I didn't really get to that within the last minute or so so the usual introduction coming a little late this time McLaren and the time shifter but that's something I've been pondering and maybe some of you guys who view this channel so uh, adamantly might have some uh, uh, other opinions on this. But I think it's to increase the demand for endurance in these long straights. That would be my final answer on it. But who knows? Something else could have escaped my uh, vision here. Looks like the time shifter's behind by a few lengths, but it's been back and forth race the whole time to that final straight. Here comes the McLaren. Oh, faster through that turn. Time shifter still got a length on him, though. Coming up on the end. No. Can't get there. 21.38. So that's going to be a solid time to finish out with. But, uh, Unfortunately, nothing for the time shifter. Car de Asada and Aston Martin. De Asada and Aston Martin. What a interesting two pair of cars. Asada here on the near side coming up faster than the first hairpin, but still holding tight. Um, here with the Aston Martin, who starts to drive away here a couple lengths between them. Asada. Mm, trying to speed up and gets to a point where he's now only down a length. Oh, speeds up to this final straight. Looking good. It's going to be close down the back five. That fifth straight. It looks like the Asada's ahead by a couple lengths. They both slow down as they move laterally inside and the Asada pulls away. And again, sometimes it's, just, it's uh, deceiving when they come out of that fifth hairpin. It looked like the Aston Martin had a lot of speed, but as they shifted in towards that finish line, that lateral motion in that last straight, that's where things start to get difficult. Aston Martin and the car did Asada again, so um, two similar models there. Well, it almost looks like the same two, but I can assure you that these are two different vehicles. This time the Aston Martin looking to put this one away. Out by a few lengths. Asada starts to build up speed again. We're back to even through that second turn. Now as they go down that third straight, things start to level out. And it still looks like the Aston Martin has some work to do. That fourth straight has a little bit steeper of a drop. And you can see the Aston Martin taking advantage of that speed. But what about this final straight? This is where it went bad for him last time. Well, in a different model. But he stays away two lengths. And it'll be flip-flop as the At Aston uh, Martin puts that away with a 22-2. Buns of Steel in the Bugatti. Buns of Steel Bugatti. That's fun to say out loud. Bugatti starting out with a length lead. Now two. Now even three already into that first hairpin with a big lead. Buns of Steel. Very un-aerodynamic. Or uh, just uh, not cutting through air very well here. And Bugatti, on the other hand, a very uh, sleek 
car body, and you can see that paying off here. Bugatti coming out really fast in the straight four. Looking to straight five, cuts back inside on that hairpin, lateral motion shifting in, and lots of time to put it away. What is the time? It's like, I think I saw a 20 there, so this is good. 20.8, that's very good. McLaren and the Ford Transit connect. Now, if I remember correctly, we had as low as a 2015 or a 2025, something like that, in the first video. Now, that is hard to hit. I don't think we hit under 19. I don't think we dug under the 20s. But we had quite the speedy finish in that first set. But I don't know if we're close to that. I know, remember the Duck and Roll put off like a 20.8 before he fell just short. There's another nice time, 20.73 as the pizza truck goes down. And we get ever closer. Looks like this team is going to bring uh, faster times overall, which is nice. Street winner in the Alfa Romeo. Street winner, Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo seems to be faster right off the bat, up by a few wheel lengths, but the street winner, and it uh, looks like a hot dog shaped model with some sort of a, you know, carry, carry home bag on the back or something. I actually can't really tell what's going on in the back there, but uh, the Romano here is coming out faster through the later straights. That endurance is strong, and he still has that same pace that he had earlier on, and it will look good down the fifth straight. Ooh, cuts inside, a little bit slow, a little bit slow. Lots of time, though, lots of time to keep up the speed, and does fine. 22.51, so not very fast compared to some of the other times we've seen, but overall still with a valiant finish. At least against that hot dog. Porsche in the Chill Mill. Porsche 911, to be exact. Chill Mill, a nice-looking vehicle. Dairy truck of sorts. It goes along with that foodie theme. And actually, it's holding well against the Porsche here. But through that first turn, the Porsche shoots out like a slingshot. And look at the difference. Just through one turn. How about this time? Oh, my God. Dairy truck not looking good on that turn. Chill mill. Really frozen through the hairpins. And just can't make up that ground. Even through the straights. He's fast, but not nearly fast enough. Porsche 911. Black and yellow. Mostly yellow. A little bit of black on the design. And he will come across way in front, 21.9, and he'll be moving on. Looks like uh, a foodie team is not going to get many on the board into the second round here. Fast foodies with two, exotics with six. Alfa Romeo. Sorry, I said Romano last time, Romeo. And here we go. We got this cool ice truck. We got the Romeo, Alfa Romeo. Keep that in your head. And here we go. Down the first straight, now into the second one. Here we go to the Alfa Romeo, still ahead by a few lengths. And this is really the last couple of hopes for the Fast Foodies. And already one of them is freezing away. Ugh, oh, not good. Well, I could use a little bit of cool ice right now. It's hot up here in the commentator's booth. And this uh, truck fails to win. Well, at least he'll pull off to the side and he'll get a chance. There we go. Alfa Romeo coming across 22.12. And I'm going to go down and get myself a snow cone or something. Can't remember last time I had one of those. But it's been uh, it's been its time. Aston Martin and the car. De Asada. The last hope. This taco-shaped truck. Last hope on the side of the um, fast foodies. Remember, this taco truck. A uh, car, whatever you want to call it, this vehicle of taco shape did defeat the last Aston Martin in face, but this one seems to be a little bit more of a trial. Coming out faster into that four straight, still a lot of length to make up of the Aston Martin, trying to hold out here by a few lengths. It's going to come down to that final turn. Aston Martin looks slow into the turn, but the taco falls apart. Little messy through that hairpin, and there will be no more food. On the table! They're all leftovers now. Porsche 911 and the Studebaker. 911 Studebaker. 
Both of these cars dominated in their first races. Looks like the Studebaker is going to be faster out of that first length. But 911 fighting his way back length by length by length. But wobbles a little bit. Looks like he hit something on the wheels. And I saw him rattle around the track there for a couple moments. And now he's going to struggle to stay on top here and even grind his way back to even be close to the Studebaker who continues a smooth ride down to that fifth hairpin. Rounds it and comes fast. Now laterally inside and looks very good to the finish. And with that being said, 20.78, can't complain about a time like that. McLaren and the Bugatti. Either of these cars could potentially win this one, but looks like the Bugatti is off to a better jump through the gate. Here we go, down the first hairpin, good for the Bugatti, but also McLaren still in there with some speed. Looks like some pace is coming back in the way of the McLaren. That second hairpin didn't look good, though, so I'm starting to worry about the McLaren in this case. Bugatti starting to slow down a little bit, trying to keep pace, but you can see the speed has docked a little bit, especially after that third straight. The last turn comes inside towards the finish line and is way ahead. 20.27! And that is just shy, I think, of the record we saw in uh, episode one. Again, I, I've been blanking on the exact numbers, but I swear it's something around like 12.15, uh, 21.5. If, if everyone has that offhand, exotic six, um, but it's really four. I don't know why six is listed. McLaren and the Aston Martin to race. Who will head to the finals of these two? If anyone there has that data in their head, just, uh, you know, even a week later, still maintaining that best time data, please, uh, please drop the actual time, but I can assure you, it is, uh, down in the 20-point teens. Studebaker Aston Martin, rounding the hairpin, coming towards the far side, Studebaker ahead by such a long shot, and we might get a clear new record here, slow down the fifth straight, however, 20.71. Really killed the Aston Martin there. Wow. Bugatti and Alfa Romeo. Who will face the Studebaker? My money's on the Bugatti. You might wonder why, and that's because he's out to a 3-4 length lead already. Looking good. Romeo, I don't know if he's got a shot though. Bugatti's been dominant today, and not just a little bit, but by a lot. Early leads, strong finishes from the Bugatti. Still looking good, down to the fourth straight. Has no cars in sight. Camera can't even see the Alfa Romeo. And he'll round towards that fifth straight as it comes towards the middle here. And he'll cross with a 20.58. And honestly, again, no complaining. And this should be a tough race between these two in the end. We've seen both of these two cars undercut the 21 time multiple times and we're about to see them finally face off. This is the finals. The best time will advance to the finals. Bugatti McLaren. We already know none of the fast foodies will be there. We already know it's going to be one of the exotics. But the question on the table is indeed which one will it be? Looks like the Studebaker out to a stronger lead. We want best time. We want best time. Who's going to put up best time? Bugatti running on the near side. Needs to be out Studebaker. He looks like he might. Rounding the final turn. He's out by a few lengths. And he will beat out the Studebaker in the last straight. 20.38. And a nice time on the board. That's going to be hard to beat. Especially this late in the tournament when... Exhaustion is setting in. Studebaker coming out fast once again. Trying to hold the pace and trying to push that pace all the way down to the fourth straight. Looks like the fourth straight is where that pace starts to dwindle. And this is where he needs to give it all he's got really to the max here. Coming down that fourth straight. Will it start to dwindle? No. Looks good and a big lead. But is that because the Bugatti is the same and the Studebaker is faster? Or is the Studebaker slower but same with the Bugatti? Crossing the line 20.18. And there the question has been answered. Oh my god. Now that is wonderful. I think we are very much nearing, we might even have that new time record. Oh man, I wish, 
I had pinpointed the number exactly for you. 20.18 may have been enough. I swear I had someone at 20.15, though. Can't be sure, but all I can be sure about is one of these cars is going to go home with the win. Is it the Studebaker? Is the Bugatti? Right now, it's the Studebaker. He has an uptime of 20.18, which is 0.2 seconds better than Bugatti's best time of 20.38. Looking even between the two, who's going to come out faster? Is it even fast enough to set a new best time? Bugatti crosses in the lead, 20.35. And that may not be enough. Well, it isn't enough. I'm just saying. I don't know if there's another opportunity. And there it will not be. Studebaker. Best time of 20.18. will advance to the... Having the fourth group of this endurance tournament. The superhero team versus the all-American team. We'll have to see which one will come out on top. I'm interested to see if the superheroes... We'll have some sort of advantage. We go off here first. Shazam versus the Chrysler. Shazam off to the early lead. Is more of a sleek car versus the Chrysler, which is more of a bulky van type uh, car. But really, this is about endurance. So you really need to stay in the lead for as long as possible. But if you go out to the lead too early, like we're seeing with the Shazam here. He did lose a lot of ground, but he's catching up here on the final straight to the final corner. And it is Shazam who has come up and take the lead. And uh, Shazam will be taking this heat. Let's see what the time was there. 21.90. Next up, we have Aquaman versus the Ford GT. These two cars are more similar in terms of shape. They're both more of a sleek car. And it is the... Uh, Aquaman who is starting to lag behind the GT seeing how he can do up in the front in the first half of the race somebody has to lead at the first half of the race it's just who is it GT is doing a good job at enduring for the remainder of the race Aquaman is having a hard time catching back up but uh, GT is a little slow through the corner here comes Aquaman about one space behind. He wasn't able to do it, and the GT will advance. 21.94 for that one. Ford Sierra and Superman. Superman having to stay on the ground for this tournament. Can't really fly away in this instance. Showing that he can still be pretty fast, even if he's grounded. At least in the first half of we entered the second half of this race. Superman is taking the lead by storm. And at this point, looking like he's going to take this heat. And uh, cross the line. Yes, he will take the heat by a long shot. And I think that was a 20 seconds. Yes, it was. Wow, almost sub 20. 20.03. 20 Power Pistons and the Copa Corvette. Our Pistons looking like a Joker type car. Joker, the arch nemesis of Batman. Not really a superhero. I guess he's still from the same universe, so he was included. Corvette, though, coming up and passing the Joker here. Only about one space apart. Joker wants to come back up and take it. The last corner is crucial. Who'll come out on top? And it's the Joker. Who comes up and passes Corvette at the last second. Joker will advance. Corvette having some trouble with endurance right in that last turn. The Dodge Charger and the Flash up next. The Flash known for his speed. Can he do good in this tournament? Not, not looking like he's doing good at this point though. Lagging pretty far behind. The All-American team having some difficulty in this tournament so far. They've had one or two cars advance, and the two superheroes have had around three. It's good to see that they have one here coming up and about to advance. Yes, they do. All-American gets uh, another car advanced, and the Flash, a very disappointing performance by him. Wasn't even close. All-Americans get 20.79. Pretty good time. Batmobile and the Corvette. Batmobile, an actual car Batman uses, Corvette, 
coming off to the slight lead at the beginning. Batmobile does not want him to get too far ahead though. Corvette is able to snag the uh, long lead now as we enter the second half of this race. Batmobile is starting to have some trouble keeping up with the Corvette, but he's coming up here. Will he be able to catch up in the final corner? Corvette really slow. Batman coming up at the last second. Will he be able to pass? No, he won't. Corvette will go up to uh, the next round. Batman will unfortunately be eliminated. Next up, the Corvette and the classic TV Batmobile. So this is a more of a classic Batmobile. Bit modded style, kind of short and blunt versus the Corvette, which is longer. Batmobile having some trouble even right in this first half of the race. Corvette is doing a tremendous job. Either that or the Batmobile is just having a terrible job and the Corvette is just doing decent. But at this point, no contest. Corvette will be taking this heat. Batmobile barely just now entering the corner. Corvette gets a time of 20.64. Wow, really far behind by the Batmobile. See if I can count how many seconds there. 20 for the uh, Corvette. Probably around three, four seconds. Aquaman and the Ford GT up next. Aquaman coming out of the water onto land. How does he do on land? At this point, he's falling behind. Corvette still. Uh, doing good these corvettes are really taking these heats pretty uh pretty tremendously aquaman where even is he there he is he's really far behind for gt we'll be taking the seat i think i called it a corvette a second ago that was a mistake but gt will be taking the seat 22.19 actually a pretty slow time but not as slow as aquaman Probably coming in at around 23. Alright, now up for the second round. Which cars have advanced so far? Three superheroes and five All-American. The All-American really came up and took charge of the situation in the second half of that first round. First up, we have the Superman and the Charger. They're neck and neck at this point. Charger takes the lead. To the second corner Superman coming up now Superman has taken the lead trying to extend it in the second half of the race but here comes the Charger and Charger takes it back they're neck and neck through the final corner who comes out on top they're neck and neck still neck and neck but it is the Charger who comes out on top one length ahead at the time of 20.11 very good time will there be a car who gets sub 20 we'll have to see Shazam and the Ford this first straight. Shazam having a little bit of trouble. Ford trying to stay one length ahead of Shazam. And now he is starting to take the lead in the second ha half of the race. Now that he has finished the first half, he can focus more on sprinting and less on endurance. Just has to make sure not to waste all his energy before it gets to the line. He's slowing down there. Shazam is catching up. But the Ford will take it. You can see this, the uh, Ford using up all his energy right to the last second. Next up, Ford GT and the Power Piston, which, again, is Joker. The Joker goes up one uh, length ahead already. And here comes the Ford GT. Having some trouble catching back up. And Joker... Taking this one by storm, unless somehow he slows down uh, in this last corner. We'll have to see. We've seen cars do that before. And he does slow down quite a bit there. 4GT takes over. And they're neck and neck. Who comes to cross the line first? It was the GT, I believe. Very close finish. And it was the 4GT with a time of 21.46 disappointing for Joker. Now, two Corvettes, 97 and 2020. The old in the new Corvette. 
Actually, I think it's the 2000 Corvette, not the 2020. Still, one's newer than the other one by three years. And it is the uh, green Corvette coming out to the lead. To the final corner. Slow through there, but the green Corvette is already too far behind, and he will take this heat. I'm pretty sure that's the 97 one. It's a time of 20.37. So many 20s. Will there be a sub-20? And All-American has completely wiped out the superheroes from advancing in this tournament. Dodge Charger in the 4 GT. The superheroes completely eliminated. Very surprising. Guess their superpowers weren't fit for racing, especially with all the rules in place, such as no flying force Superman and is the Dodge Charger who is coming out to the lead in this heat. Dodge Charger having a lot of speed there through the final corner. And uh, he'll take the seat. GT is pretty far behind. Another 20, 20.43 20 for the Dodge Charger. Closest we've seen in this video, 20.03. Next up, 97 Corvette and the Ford GT. And the Corvette coming out to the early lead. Will he be able to endure the rest of the race? Just keeping a close eye on him, but right now he's extending his lead. The GT is having some trouble. Corvette doing a great job at this point. But we'll have to see if he starts to lose steam as he gets into this final corner. There still is a chance the GT could come back up, but no, he won't. As the Corvette has a good job through the uh, corner there. Takes this heat 20.33. Now it's time for the final round of this tournament. There will be three rounds, and the car that has the fastest time will be the champion of this tournament. Which two cars will it be? The 97 Corvette and the Dodge Charger. Both of these cars have not lost a round in this entire tournament. They're neck and neck at this point. Dodge Charger trying to take the slight edge. But it is the Corvette who comes out in the second half of the race. Corvette still trying to hold the lead, coming to this final corner. It is possible he could lose the, lose the lead, and they're neck and neck. Who comes out first? And it's the Dodge Charger who takes it there. 20.08, very close to a sub-20. If anyone was to get a sub-20, it'd be these finalists. Corvette. Trying to get a faster time than the Dodge Charger, who only has two more chances to do so. He needs to work on his endurance and stamina. At this point, he's in the lead. Charger is falling back. At this point, the Corvette really taking the lead. Blow through that corner, but these corners are so sharp. It is the uh, Corvette with another 20 seconds. I believe that was either 20.07 or 01. 01. 0 0.2. 0 0.02 seconds off of the sub 20 barrier. This Corvette really is going for the record books here. And uh, at this point, the Dodge Charger pretty much has to get a sub 20. He wants to beat the Corvette. Corvette, though, going for that sub 20 barrier as well. And he is in the lead. Dodge Charger not looking like he's going to be able to pass the Corvette. Corvette slowing down here. Here comes the Dodge Charger. What is the time? 20.02. Another great time by the Corvette. No sub-20. The Corvette will be the champion of this tournament. Best time 20.01. So close to sub-20. So here are the cars that are advancing to the finals. The uh, All-Americans, the pickups, the exotics. And the NASCAR team. So these are the four teams advancing to the final round. Thank you all so much. Way back in the first video, the Richard Petty blew our minds with the times he put up on the board. 
And now, as we head into the semifinals, we'll get to catch wind of him again. Hey, everybody. I'm Brendan. And the fifth group, the semifinals, first group of the semifinals, fifth group of this whole ordeal, is kicking off here as we head to the first round. It will be the Impala and the Ford F-150 to kick things off. And they'll get out there and get racing as we establish this new group. And excited to see who comes out fast today. It looks like the pickup trucks are starting stronger, but the NASCAR team overall has some very tough racers to get by uh, later on in the round. Here comes the Impala on the near side, down a few lengths here to the hairpin, and has no chance. Oh, looks like for a second he might have had acceleration, but no, it's going to fall flat. 21.49 is your benchmark for today. We've seen as low as, I think, 2015 over the course of all the first round groups and now it's I'm going to see if they got any faster by the semifinals I mean they've had time especially the NASCAR team they've had a lot of time to practice a lot of time to build their speed and so we'll see if anything changed each of these straights by the way on this endurance track are a little bit different. Different levels of drops, different steepness, different uh, overall gradient, and that makes a difference when the cars get out there to, and perform on each straight. They can't go each one until the same strategy. 20.79. Brett Boating and the Volkswagen Caddy. The Brett and the Volkswagen. Both cars coming out nice and even. We're about even as we head to that first hairpin. Brett on the near side starts to build a small lead. A beautiful green car with the 26 very boldly on the side. And he starts to fall backwards here. It's not a close race right now. Let's see if it comes back here down the fourth straight. Brett looking to catch up. He's on his way. It's closer. Maybe about two lengths difference. Here's the hairpin. And they're even. Brett back on top to the end. And yes, he'll take it. And what a comeback finish. Time of 22.38. So I doubt he'll be around much longer. F-150 and the Richard Petty. But a good comeback by the Brett. It's nice to see that out here. Some of the races... Sometimes they side themselves only um, a few seconds in, but that one was uh, unsure to the very last, uh, very last moment. Here comes a Richard Petty, already a huge lead, and we're going to expect to see this car much more in the later races. He'll come down towards the middle, cross the line, and he's got it. 19.96. Well, that's something. That's something to be scared of if you are the pickup truck team. Monte Carlo and the draft mate. 19.96. That blows out of the water. Some of the times we even saw in the other groups. Crazy fast. And the Richard Petty. Well, he's going to lead the charge for the NASCAR team. Here comes the Monte Carlo. Down a few lengths. The draft mate are holding up in there as well. The lead starts to dwindle for this draft nader as we head to that fifth straight. Monte Carlo tries to speed up, but he sees rattling laterally back and forth and can't stay straight. That's going to cost him some speed, but here he comes. Only two lengths back, but he doesn't have a chance to catch up. 21.98. And the draft nader will come away stronger. Low Lux in the Charger. Low Lux. Charger. Low Lux, a interesting choice of car. I think it's supposed to be representative of a pickup truck in some degree, but definitely an odd shape, not really uh, uh, conducive to racing as far as how the shape of the body is formed, but still coming out quite fast. Ahead by the Charger on about five lengths, and he'll whip around again and be uh, extending that lead. Charger's not even on camera at this point. The final hairpin still looks good for the low lot. Charger barely getting around that hairpin, a very slow vehicle, and the low lot's going to... The low luck, sorry, is going to move on. Low luck, what is that from? I don't know. I've heard low luck, that word thrown around before, but I don't remember 
why that reference popped into my head. Charger and the Chevy pickup. No matter. It's the low lux. Chevy pickup, Charger. Charger for the Hot Wheels NASCAR team. And Chevy pickup, obviously, for the pickup truck team. On the far side there by a couple lengths right now. And starting to stretch that lead. You can see it build there by the end of the second straight. And look at the distance. Oh, man. The NASCAR team trouble in the hairpins here. And he'll get around and still the Chevy pickup by, well, quite a bit now. Into that fifth turn. And we start to wobble laterally inside. And there you go. 22.07. So not a fast time, but uh, it's a win. That'll keep us moving to the next one. Circle Tracker and the GMC Cyclone. I don't know if that's spelled wrong, but uh, every Cyclone I've seen has started with a C. Cyclone and the GMC. Well, Cyclone is the GMC and the Tracker there on the a far side who's down now by a bunch of lengths. The GMC Cyclone looks to be maybe the Richard Petty of the pickup truck team. He's coming so fast. Look at the lead as he's built. Even though it was just the three straights into the fourth one, absolutely no sign of the tracker. Eh, well, there you go. Crossing the other way, and this Cyclone is a flurry of activity. 20.51, a strong time to put up, and I bet it's only going to get more exciting from here. here comes the circle tracker. Way behind, probably about a 23 or 4 on the clock there. I mean, that was terrible. Three NASCARs, five pickups. Brett Bodine in the Chevy pickup. We saw the Brett Bodine make quite the comeback in the first race. We saw the Chevy pickup dominate his race, but not with the best time. So this race is kind of close. Here comes the Brett. Now down by a length, now back to even. Chevy pickup still holding out, though, by a wheel length and starts to build this lead again through that second straight like he did last time. Now down up about four lengths for the Chevy pickup. He came out of the hairpin much stronger. Brett did not handle that third hairpin well. Through that other one, and we got to the last hairpin coming up here as we curve back inside. Chevy pickup up by a few lengths. Here comes the Brett. He's fast towards the finish, and another comeback for the Bretts. 21.76, and that is an upset. Lolux and Impala will get going. But what a finish for the Brett. That's two comeback wins. It seems like that inside hairpin. And then to that uh, shift back towards the middle to get to the starting gate. And that fifth straight is all good for the way the Brett races. All the speed came back then. What a way to finish a race. Honestly, I am impressed by the Brett, even though times don't show that he'll maybe participate in the finals. He needs to speed it up, but... Excellent racing, nonetheless. Lolux down by a few lengths. Impala holding out by a little bit, and he's going to cross with a 20.96. Put up a decent time, and he'll be heading to the next round as well. Ford F-150 in the Richard Petty. Here we go. They jump out of the gate. Well, not really Ford F-150. He kind of stuttered at the start of the gate, and that's going to leave him away about a few lengths. Already a lot of work to do if he wants to beat the Richard Petty, so this is not really the time to stutter out of the gate. No matter anyway, Richard Petty already so many lengths ahead that I couldn't even count it by car lengths. I have to really count it by track lengths, which is about three. Three of those connected pieces of races and fun track, and even four maybe as he races to the finish. And what time do we put up there? Nothing but 20.06. And those are two excellent times. He started with a 1996. Uh, I wasn't even born yet back in that year. Now he put up a 20.06, and I was still young at that point. Um, 2006. A long time ago, it feels like. Here comes the Cyclone, by the way. Also, like I said, the Richard Petty of the pickup trucks is coming fast. Yeah, 1996. I don't know what was going on then, but uh, that time is quite, quite impressive there coming from the Richard Penny. Here comes the GMC Cyclone. Up by so many lengths, I can't count them either. And he's going to cross with a 1974. Oh, wow. We're really going back in time here. That is an impressive time. Now we have a challenger to the Richard Petty. A 19.74 is unheard of. 
semifinals. Who is going to face each other in the finals? We'll find out now. The Cyclone and the Brett Bodine. Based on times. We saw a 1974 from the Cyclone. And we saw, well, nothing shy of 2150 from the bread so if uh, I had to put my money down I think I'd be a safe bet on the cyclone unless he uh, you know was taken off the track by a tornado which uh, within the races and fun stadium with today's weather impossible cyclone coming around that final hairpin inside oh studies for a second gives the bread like <laughs> a few lengths of catch up but not nearly enough to make a difference, 20.58. And even with a stutter, if you're putting up a sub-21 time, I mean, unbelievable. Impala and the Richard Petty. Number four, number 43. I hate to jump to conclusions, but I think we kind of know who's going to win here. Impala on the near side, bright white, beautiful decals, fast racer, probably one of the better ones on this NASCAR team. But on the far side, we got the Richard Petty, bright blue and orange. 43 in white on the side, dark wheels, and nothing but speed. Even on the Impala, one of the better racers again on the NASCAR team, absolutely destroyed. Two, three lengths ahead, even with a little bit of catch up that's coming up at the end here, it's not even close. And we're going to put a 20.14, and that uh, speed consistency is very strong for the Petty. Has been dropping though. He went from 1996 to 2006 to 20.14, but that is what it is. I'm sure in the finals we'll bring it all back. Best time will advance to the finals of this tournament. Who will stick it out? The Cyclone or the Petty? Cyclone has had the best time today with 1974. Petty, obviously no one to sneeze at with a 1996. Uh, and who is going to come out of these next three races with the best time overall? I actually don't know. It is a close race, and this one is... Probably the closest we've seen all the way down to the third straight and still they're right on top of each other. Cyclone starting to speed up here on the near side and it's about even to the fifth straight. It's the Cyclone coming out faster. Who's going to cross with the best time? The Cyclone with a 19.7 blasts every time away. 19.7. That's bananas. I don't know any other word for it. Literally banana, literally fruit, to see that sort of time up on that board. Are they going to go nuts again? Let's see. Richard Petty up by a few lengths. Cyclone still holding on in there. A chance down the fifth straight. Petty really trying to push this one away right here. Here he goes. Down to the finish line. Faster than before with a 19.53. Whoa. He blew that completely out of the water, out of the planet. Unbelievable time! 19.53! Unbelievable! Bananas upon bananas! That being said, it comes down to this final race. This is the third one. Whoever has the fastest time here, they will be heading to the finals with their team. Richard Petty up by a few lengths. GMC Cyclone starting to make the pass to catch up. He's down by a length. The final hairpin. Who's going to have it? GMC Cyclone comes up faster. If he's got the fastest time, he's got the win. Across with a 19.62. And it will fall just short by .09. And it will end in that order, 19.53, absolutely the best time we've seen this whole time. Richard Petty will take NASCAR to the final. Final round. Hey everybody, I'm Jeremiah and I'm excited to see which team will advance against the NASCAR team, the All-American team or the Exotics team. This will be a heated uh, video as both of these teams have most of their cars designed for speed. Unlike some of the cars in the previous videos, like some of the fast booties and the um, duck and roll. As we get going here, the Exotics off to the early lead, but the All American coming up from behind. But it is still the Exotics who have taken the early lead. Will they be able to endure, especially in this final turn? They're coming up here neck and neck. And the All-American comes up and passes right through the final corner. And they will be advancing to the next round. You can see there the Exotics 
really having some trouble with that final turn. We've seen that quite a lot in this tournament. Next up, Ford Sierra and the McLaren P1. McLaren, a uh, very sleek car versus the uh, Sierra. And they're at the neck at this point, but it is the McLaren who has the very slight edge. But they're really neck and neck in this entire race so far. And when you have these neck and neck races, really where the what can make or break your race is this final corner here. Who comes out on top? It's the McLaren down the final straight and they will take this heat. Really that final corner is what one of the most important parts of this race. The, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that one. The blue as well as for the Chrysler which is the more bulky car with very large, unproportionate wheels. And uh, let me know in the comments how you would pronounce this blue car right now that it's very far behind at this point. The Chrysler, pretty far ahead. Is the shorter cars, are the shorter cars better for the, the turns, less contact points? I'm not sure. But it's just something to think about. Uh, the Chrysler does advance to the next round. So I won't have to pronounce that name of the uh, blue car of the exotics anymore in this video. Corvette and the Bugatti. Two sports cars, if you will. And the Bugatti comes out to the early lead. Will he be able to keep the lead? Do the second half and that final corner where the Corvette be able to come up from behind. The Corvette is conserving his energy. Bugatti is running out of fuel fast. In these races, especially for the front runners at the very end, right when you get up to this final corner, you start having to run on fumes. And here comes Corvette from behind. But Bugatti will be taking this heat. I think that was a finish on the 20 seconds. That's 20.35. The Alfa Romeo and the Ford GT. GT coming out to the early lead in this heat. Coming down through the next straight. Romeo is a little bit more of a... Uh, like a taller car than the GT. GT is more aerodynamic. Which can help. Especially in these endurance races thing is with this, the uh, more aerodynamic cars and the Romeo comes up from behind and they take the lead at the last second Romeo will advance the next round but as I was saying usually when the cars are more aerodynamic they're also a little bit longer which can cause the turns to be a little bit harder Charger and the McLaren Charger is one of the cars that did pretty good in the first video that it was in they could even may have gotten up to the final last couple of rounds in that video right now it's kind of lagging behind the McLaren but it is catching up here through the final corner who will come out on top in this corner this time and it is the Charger who will be taking this heat advancing yet again to the next round With a 20.08, so close to sub-20. We did have a sub-20 last video. Austin Martin and the Ford. We did have a sub-20 uh, time in the last video. Will we have a sub-20 in this video? The Austin Martin lagging a little bit behind the Ford. Ford is gaining a little bit of ground. All these cars are under a lot of pressure because whichever team advances will be having to go up against the NASCAR team. And those cars are really built for their top speed. And racing is what they are made for. And we'll have to see how these cars do against them. Corvette and the Austin Martin next. Looks like kind of an older Corvette versus the Austin Martin. Lagging behind right at the beginning of the race. Is he just letting the Corvette burn out all his energy right at the first couple seconds of the race? 
Or is he actually having some trouble with acceleration? Corvette, though. Very far behind. Almost already halfway through the track. Well, I guess not halfway. More like a fourth before the other car even gets to the next corner. Corvette will take this one by storm. No contest. And we do have a sub-20. 19.91 by the Corvette. Great performance by the Corvette. And that's what you start to see as you get farther down into this tournament. Faster cars start coming out and showing themselves. Now for the second round, five exotics, three All-American. At this point, the exotics have more chance to advance the next round, Bugatti and the Charger. They're neck and neck at this point. Nobody really wants to pull ahead, but it is Bugatti who decides to do so. The Charger, though, is no car to mess around with. We saw in the first round, he kind of lagged behind for the entirety of the race all the way up into the last corner. Will he do it here? Let's see here in a second. Bugatti still being able to hold the lead for the, through that corner, and that will eliminate the Dodge Charger. I was expecting the Bugatti to actually having a little bit more of a slow turn. And there's another sub-20 there. Next up, Chrysler and the Alfa Romeo again. But we had another sub-22 in a row. Will the Chrysler be able to even make it to the final round? I would like to see that. See if it's able to, but right now the Alfa Romeo, Romeo, <laughs> excuse me, um, out to the lead through the second to last corner. The Chrysler, though, does a little bit better in the corners. Let's see if he's able to catch up through. It's really slow for the Alfa Romeo. And Chrysler's able to overtake in the last turn. And he will be advancing to the next round. What was the time that time? 21.73. McLaren and the Corvette up next. The old versus the new. The Corvette seems to be the type of car that is a front runner that he doesn't like to kind of lag behind and conserve his energy for a last minute overtake. He just wants to get to the line as quickly as possible. McLaren's though kind of like to conserve their energy and then push it at the last second. But I don't know if he's going to be able to take it because the Corvette is so far behind. A little bit slow through that corner. But he's too far ahead for McLaren to catch back up. And another sub-20 for the Corvette. 19 point, I think it was 5.9. So many sub-20s in a row. It was only two hundreds of a second. Hello, uh, 20 seconds. Austin Martin and the Porsche. They're neck and neck. The Austin Martin coming out to the early lead. Porsche trying to catch up, or is he waiting for the Austin Martin to slow down, losing some of his energy? In the second to last corner, Austin Martin still in the lead. Will he be able to stay in the lead for the final corner? He's pretty slow, but he's able to keep the lead. I think he'll take the seat. Yes, he will. There's a 21.77. Now for the semifinals, which teams will it be 2-2? And the Chrysler is in the semifinals. Bugatti versus the Chrysler. Chrysler. Will he be able to beat the Bugatti? It's short and blunt versus long and sleek. And right now is the Bugatti through the first corner. You can see though, as you look at the Chrysler through the corner, he actually goes faster through the corner than the Bugatti does. The Bugatti has more speed through the straights. Two different strategies. Both have their highlights, but at this point, the Bugatti very far ahead. I don't think the Chrysler even has a chance of catching up. You can see their Chrysler way, way behind. He will be eliminated. The Bugatti will advance to the next round. I was hoping Chrysler would be able to get to that final round, but it won't happen. 20.15 for the Bugatti. Next up, Corvette and the Austin Martin final duel in the semifinals. Which car will be going up against the Bugatti? And in classic fashion, it is the Corvette who's front running yet again. This Corvette consistent in his strategy. Austin Martin 
Um, slowing down a little bit there. You can't let the Corvette get too far ahead, though, because he will try to. Try to um, get the gap big enough that the Austin Martin can't even catch up, and he has done it. Corvette will take this heat. Another sub-20, 19.78. Austin Martin probably having around 21 to 22. Could have even been a 23. Very slow for the Austin Martin. So now for the final round, will be the best of three, the fastest time. We'll advance against the NASCAR. We have the Bugatti versus the Corvette. Will it be the exotic? Or will it be All-American Corvette? Representing the All-American Bugatti is the Exotics. And the Corvette is having a harder time pulling out ahead like he has done so many times in this tournament so far. Bugatti is trying to stay uh, close as possible. But this time it's not really about racing, it's about time. And Corvette has gotten many sub-20s in this race. And here comes Bugatti and he takes over the lead with a 19.97. Corvette has two more chances to beat this time, and it's not unreasonable for him to beat it because he has gotten two or three sub-20s in a row, and he's definitely, I think he had a 19.78, which was faster than, than uh, the Bugatti's time a second ago. Bugatti this time taking the lead through the first half of Corvette, not liking what he's seeing, and he comes up and overtakes Bugatti there. Will Corvette be able to beat Bugatti's time? All he has to do is get 19.9, uh, uh, 98. He got a 19 point, looked like a 6.9, and he has a faster time. Bugatti only has one more chance to beat the Corvette. This time they're neck and neck. Who'll come out through the first corner? They're still neck and neck. Both of these cars pushing their cars to the ultimate limit of what they can do. Corvette comes out to the lead through the third corner. And if uh, the uh, Bugatti isn't able to pass Corvette, he pretty much has been eliminated. And the All-American will advance with the NASCAR. But Bugatti coming up here, one length behind. And Corvette gets a 19.75. And that will advance Corvette to the final round against the NASCAR team. Thank you all. Beautiful things about a tournament series is you get to see that progression of skill over the course of the ordeal. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan and I am excited to see even more so Richard Petty and the Charger to get going here. How these two teams will continue to improve as we head into the finals. I remember back in the first couple of videos we were blown away from by times under 21. Now earlier, I mean later on, we were blown away by times under 20. And today, will we be blown away by a time under 19, or at least that 19.53? Well, I couldn't tell you, but I'm hoping for the best. Richard Petty, again, coming out fast. Charger almost catches up to him at the end, but Richard Petty, 19.71, and we are already close. The starting fastest time gets lower and lower every time. Brett Bodine in the Ford GT40. Brett in the GT40. Now... I mean, we'll be realistic here while we're racing. But the the speed of the Brett does not match the speed of the Richard Petty. So is the Brett going to beat out the Richard Petty to represent NASCAR in the finals? Probably not. But what is the Brett's job here? The Brett's job is to put other all-American cars out of the way. To try to at least eliminate a few of them and make it easier on the NASCAR team in the finals. Looks like, again, we're going to get a comeback from the Brett as he does just that. 21.68, again a slow time, but we've seen so many times in the past few videos the Brett come back in the fifth straight, and he does again so there. GT40 in the Impala, and that is a big help to the NASCAR team. It gives them more cars to work with, it gives them less pressure. You know, it doesn't have to be the Richard Petty versus the whole field of all Americans. And so, good on the Brett for doing his job, playing his role here on the team. GT40, again, and the Impala. Impala, 
falling back. This might be a good win for the All-American team, or their first win, which they could use. It's close here to the end, though. Impala starts to speed up. GT40 barely holding on, but holds on. 21-33. I'm excited to see who might emerge from the Charger team. Charger and the Chrysler 300. And not the Charger team, the All-American team. I got it confused, because the first bunch of them were Chargers. Uh, this Chrysler here, man, what an odd-looking vehicle. But it's exciting to see who might emerge from there to be the Richard Petty Challenger, the sub-20 racer. Charger here on the near side for NASCAR, Chrysler there on the far side for All-American. Chrysler looking a lot faster right now, but I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's working sub-20 right now. He looks slow and fast at the same time. It's hard for me to explain, but that's how I'm feeling. Here comes the Chrysler around that final turn. Oh, he starts to balk in speed. He loses some lengths out, but he still gets to the end. Two very slow racers. 22.39 for the Chrysler, and not any better for the Charger. Corvette in the Monte Carlo. All-American looks to be below average so far as far as speed goes. We'll see how that picks up over the course of these groups. Corvette looking like he's coming a lot faster. Putting my words back in my mouth, per se. And uh, based on how he's versing a Monte Carlo, who's usually an overall average racer, and this could prove good for the All-American team. Is it sub-20, though? Looks like it might be. How will that fifth turn look? It's important. He's smooth through that fifth turn. Comes inside quickly. Doesn't seem to lose any speed on it. What's the time in the clock? 20.46, and that's not bad. You've seen the Richard Petty put up 20 and a half times before and then go right down to 19.53. Well, Impala and Corvette will get going here. It looks like that's a possibility, at least for that previous Corvette. Impala, Corvette. Impala on the near side here. That bright white vehicle. Always enjoy seeing him racing. Just stands out against the crowd, that yellow four. And he's about even with that Corvette on the far side. He's more of a darker blue, still with some white in there as well. Rounds that second to last hairpin. And we have the inside one coming up. They're even. This is a close race. Impala on the near side does break away from the hairpin faster, and I think he's going to grab it. And what time do we have? That's a 20.41. I think that might be the best time for this white Impala on the NASCAR team. Again, seeing that progression of improvement. Wonderful. Ford Sierra and the Charger. Charger Sierra. Sierra, whoa. Blasting out of the gate. Three lengths, four lengths, five lengths, six lengths. Let's count him up. Man, he is coming out fast. And I am very hopeful for the time on this car. Already, Ford Sierra rounds that second hairpin. Mm, a little slow, I will admit, but still holding a lot of speed. And the straights have been wonderful. Rounds this one a little bit smoother. Comes out fast. Still accelerating. Still building speed. The inside hairpin. Here we go. And doesn't look bad at all. Is this a sub-20 time? It might be. No, 20.6. Looked a lot faster out there than I thought. But I think it was the hairpins that did him in by those, uh, I'd say, half a second. Not bad times, though. All-American is, is lingering out there with some possible fast racers. On any given day, a racer can cut off a second on his time if he gets off to a good start. Circle tracker in the Corvette. And I think that's possible here for the All-American team, who is overall better at consistency with good times as opposed to those couple of cars who just, you know, blow the field away with bananas. Man, I never thought I'd say that. Blow the field away with bananas. But, uh, I mean, how else do you represent the speed of the Richard Petty and really, actually, the, the GMC Cyclone, who also had similar tendencies in the last one, but just came up short. Corvette way faster than the Circle Tracker here, and he will go 19.77, and we have eyes on a car here in the All-American team. Good time. Good time. No other word for it. Second round. What do we got here? We got Exotics with five, or the All-American team. We got NASCAR with three. Brett Bodine in the four GD40. Four GT40, out by a few lengths. Brett Bodine trying to cut down another Ford again, take pressure off NASCAR, who is down five to three here. 
Brett Bodine again, not the fastest car, but somehow always manages to come back towards the end. Looks good for the Brett as he comes down towards the finish line, only a few lengths behind that 4 GD40, all lining up as it's done all those other races where he's made the comeback, that final turn, and yes, he is coming faster, overtaking the GT40, and what a wonderful racer. I've never seen such a, a, based on time, lackluster racer be so strong out on the track. Ford Sierra and the Impala will get going. And honestly, I am genuinely impressed. The Brett Bodie just continues to put vehicles away. Yes, he's not going up against the fastest, but he's getting the job done. Takes pressure off NASCAR, who now has him to put up against someone in the finals, um, in the semifinals. Good racing. You gotta commend that sort of performance. Impala, the white Impala on the far side. Here comes the Fort Sierra, baking up ground quite a bit, but loses it down the final hill. 20.72. Impala tries to push for fast time, and uh, he does get under 21 quite a bit, but can't seem to get down to the 19s. Richard Petty in the Chrysler 300. Chrysler 300 was above 22 last time. Richard Petty, I don't even know if he understands what 22 means. I don't know if that number has ever even crossed over his hood. But, well, I mean, I don't see the Chrysler. I'm looking for him. I'm trying to find the Chrysler. There he is. But I, I don't really see him. He's not in the frame. The Richard Petty, he's going to do what he's going to do. I mean, come on. We wanted to see him in the finals, and we're probably going to. At least he's getting to the semifinals here. 19.39! I can't. <laughs> we might get below 19 today. 19.39. 19.39. And you know what? He did not even have to. He, there was no reason for him to be that fast in this race, but it's just so ingrained into him. Corvette and, um, now Porsche. I thought it was labeled Corvette before, and they look exactly the same. But, uh, well. We're going to call it that the, the, the Aqua Corvette on the far side there, because I'm pretty sure that that's what it is. Um, no matter though, I am blown away by the Richard Petty. 19.39, that is by far the best time that we've seen over the course of this endurance tournament, and it doesn't seem to be getting any slower. If we can get under 19, man, that would be wonderful. I would, I would give you all bananas. Alright, here we go. Corvette coming across the line, and what is that? A 19.66, and we've got a challenger! We've got a true challenger to the Richard Petty here. As the finals get closer, and we find our contenders. NASCAR with three. Brett Bodine again doing a wonderful job. Now giving um, little pressure to the NASCAR team in the semifinals. They know they're going to get one in. There's no problem there. And now, um, well, <laughs> based on the two cars out right now, the Brett Bodine and the Richard Petty are going to be versing each other. But, um, I mean, we almost don't even have to watch that race, if I'm very honest. Okay, White Impala here on the near side. Oh, staying a few lengths close with the Corvette, but still down by a few. And him being about a, uh, a 20 and a half racer, and the Corvette being a little bit better. The times make sense. He crosses with a 19.8, and he flirts with the top of the 19s. But he cannot seem to get below or towards 19.5, which might prove troublesome when they race for times in the finals. 19.8. Corvette, best time of the day was a 19.66. That car will be a true contender in the finals. On the next semifinal race here, we have the Brett Bodine and the Richard Petty. Richard Petty already blowing the Brett Bodine out of the water with his speed. But the question is here, and, and this is going to prove um, interesting in the finals. The question is, does the Corvette have the speed to match the Petty every time, or does Petty have the energy to put up something like a 19.39 um, over and over again? He crosses this time with a 19.53, matching that old record. And, uh, man, I don't know, I don't know how he's so fast. How is he so fast? And that's gonna be tough to contend with. Corvette's gonna have to bring out all the stops here. Finals. Car with the best time advances to finals. But we're in the finals. So it's the car with the best time wins. Richard Petty in the Corvette. If advances to finals is code for wins, then we're on the same page here. Richard Petty, Corvette. Who's going to put up that first best time? Richard Petty starting to 
Gain a little bit of a lead here by a length, but the Corvette is keeping pace. It's wonderful to see, and he's back on top by a length. Richard Petty is actually behind for the first time in a long time. Corvette barely holding on here. And it's by a wheel length to Richard Petty. Down the fifth turn, into the fifth straight. The Corvette can't keep up, and Richard Petty blows it away again with a 19.33. Blows it away. Which, by the way, by the way, and we can't see the number, but I wish you could, means the Corvette being just behind the Petty there probably picked up a time of about 19.5, which means that it is capable for this car to race even faster than he did before. And so it's possible. 19.33 the time on the table. I can't even believe I've seen a number like that, especially based on how cars looked back then. Corvette is actually holding pace and with a lead coming out of this hairpin. Richard Petty is slow. Corvette crosses with a 19.41, and he's not close enough, even though that time is nuts. Bananas, whatever word you want to use. I Unfathomable, really. They come out again, this is the third one. Best time here wins. Best time if someone can sub 19.33 is gonna win. Corvette has to stay in front of the Petty if he has any hope of doing so. He's down a length, down about two lengths. The fourth turn, here we go. And tough on the Corvette. He's gonna have trouble getting back on top. The Richard Petty may put it down right here. Corvette, the final turn. He's down too many lengths and the Richard Petty crosses with what time? A 19.28, a 19.28. Oh man. And they race him again, maybe it's five. Oh, they're giving him four. They're giving him four races, actually, because they wanted to get even. Usually, they do, they're the past times they did three, but they want an even amount of um, times on each lane. That makes sense. They're really pulling out that kind of stop for the final. Corvette has another chance here. He seems to be faster in this near side. This is it. Can he sub 19.28? Can he do that? I don't think he can. I don't know if anyone can. The Corvette crosses way out ahead. 19.27! And the All-American team wins! 19.27! What? What? That is crazy. I, I actually can't believe this tournament ended in an excitement I could not imagine. All-American team by .01 undercuts the Richard Petty, the uh, seemingly best racer out of nowhere. I can't believe what I just saw, and that will do it for the endurance tournament what a finish to this one i can't wait to see what races and fun brings for us next and we will see you next time when that happens